Thank you very much, Andy. Um, thanks for coming, everybody. Um, and sorry about this rather embarrassing microphone that I'm wearing. I feel a bit like Madonna today. Um, so look, we're, we're an interactive company, so if you want to interact, just like interrupt me. I, I won't be offended at, at all. That'll be fine. I'm here to talk about um, Horse Tracker, which is a, uh, it's an app that uh, we, and with help from Seavolution and another company, we built this for Channel 4, um, one of the UK's big commercial broadcasters. Um, who I, I, won't, I won't tell you too much about them, but what I, I will do is tell the story uh, and set the context for how we got involved with this, um, this harebrained scheme. So um, last year, Channel 4 outbid the BBC for the rights to some of the biggest horse racing events in the UK. They snatched it from them, um, which is a big coup for Channel 4, a much smaller broadcaster. Um, and they won the rights to the Grand National, which is the biggest horse race in the UK. Um, and so that, that meant a lot of things for them. Channel 4 has got a much younger audience. Uh, and amongst other things, one of their objectives um, was that once they had the rights to this, um, this incredible event, was how to make it appeal to younger audiences and how to do innovative things with this new acquisition. So we went to Channel 4 knowing that they had this challenge. And we showed them this exact slide. And we, we said to them, we already had a relationship with these guys, and we said, look, you know, you've got this race, but one of the big problems with this race is that most of us place a bet on it. There's, there's a huge amount of money bet on this race every year, up to half a billion pounds. There's just people like me put two or three quid on two or three horses. But the problem is you can't see a damn horse. It's there's so many of these things on the, on the track that... It's chaos. You wouldn't even know. I mean, can you tell the difference between this horse and this horse and this horse? Most of us don't even know anything about horse racing, but we've got a vested interest in it. So that's a big problem for most of the audience, especially in this particular race. And some of them, of course, fall away, and you, you can't track um, all of the horses in the TV coverage. The commentator can't reference 40 horses. So what are we going to do about this particular problem? Now, we, we had a reason for highlighting this problem because we thought we knew what the solution was. We had met this company called Turf Tracks, who have this incredible technology that fits into the saddles here. It's, uh, it's actually just a couple of RF transmitters that sit in either, uh, either part of the saddle. And they, they transmit the, the position of the horses, to cut a long story short. Uh, and we thought, what if we could use that and build an app around tracking your horse? You know, we'd seen it done with cycling before. We thought maybe it's possible. Um, oops, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so we, we thought we had a solution to it, and we'd been talking to the guys at Seavolution about another part of the equation, which is the synchronization. So I, I'm not going to go into too much detail until after this video, so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, I think I might need a little more volume on the video if anyone has got volume. Great. So have a look at this. This is a couple of minutes, and it's a case study, so excuse the marketing uh, sort of nature of it. So you get the idea 
what we built and, and, and how it worked there. So it's, a, it's an iOS app. It was actually an HTML5 app as well, which is available on the website. But the, the iOS app had something very particular about it, which is really the reason um, for being here today. When you downloaded the app, you had a choice of races. There are several races in this event, and, um, and y you could pick which race you wanted to get involved with. It was the obviously the next race coming up. So you, you would pick the race, and you would then choose which horses you had placed a bet on or just which horses you were interested in, and you'd, you'd hit the button, and you'd track one of these horses. There's a problem, though, because the data that we're receiving from those devices gets to us, gets to our servers within about a second. And that data can then be transmitted to all the people holding these devices in their hands within about another second. So it's only two seconds delay from, from one point to the next. The problem is the TV itself takes a lot longer to get from the track to the living room. So how, how are we going to um, tackle this problem? So this is, this is how turf tracks works. Those, um, uh, yeah, th those transponders, um, there's, a, there's a sort of triangulation method around the track, and they get there's, a, there's the servers that turf tracks have, and this is then connected to our Elvis platform, and then it's transmitting to, uh, to the device. And here's, here's the problem. that In the UK, we've got tons of different ways of watching this thing. You could be on Sky HD over here, and in that case, sometimes it takes up to 20 seconds or more um, from track to TV. Um, if you're on Freeview, it's a much shorter gap. So... The risk is that we'd kind of spoil it for people. They'd be watching their horse, and they'd see that their horse had won even, <laughs> even before they'd seen it on TV, which would be um, a little bit disappointing for people. So we thought, well, how can we, how can we get this in sync? We, we couldn't transmit all of that data through audio watermarking or one of those techniques. There's too much data. You can only put a little bit of data into that transmission. So we had to connect directly to the devices in the way we normally do. So what we needed to do was try and measure this delay, this variable delay, and then apply that delay as an offset to the client device. And we'd never heard of this done before, so it was a huge risk. And you know, thank you to Channel 4 for trusting that we could pull it off. Um, so we sat down um, with the Cvolution guys, and we figured out how to do it. We added a sync step at the very beginning of the experience, which listened out for the Cvolution audio watermark, which was actually uh, it was a hardware solution which is put into the, the head end, into the playout suite at, at, at Red B, uh, which is now there 24-7. Uh, and what we figured out was that we could actually, we could measure that, uh, that delay by, by comparing the data that we got, which was timestamp, with the timestamp that came through the watermark. And this is how it works. So the OB truck transmits the signal, as you, you, know, you all know more about this than I do, but it, it transmits the signal um, up and down to Red B it is in, uh, in West London. Um, and that's where the Sync Now box lives. The Sync Now box then inserts the audio watermark with a, a time code payload into the watermark that we can listen to. Um, so that comes through the TV. Uh, the audio signal is detected by our app, and our, our app then compares the time that it's listening to through the watermark with the time that it's received through our platform, Elvis, and it looks at the difference. And it's as simple as that. It knows what the latency is. It applies that latency to the data that it receives, it just holds on to the data for two seconds extra or three seconds extra. And then periodically, it listens again and it adjusts it if it needs to. But actually, there's very little drift, so we don't really need to do that. And that's the solution. And it, this, is a, this is a technique that I can imagine is going to be used a lot more in future. It's about latency offset rather than necessarily trying to put all of the data through the audio watermark. And it worked incredibly well. When you, when you, you can try it next time. It's actually, this is now used for all the UK horse racing. So the next time there's a... Uh, a li live horse race on Channel 4, get the app and have a look at it. When you see it working, it's almost magic. You can't believe that it's possible to be watching something that is live and to be seeing the position of the horse live on your phone. But of course, we're actually taking advantage of that 20 second, that 10 second delay to create the illusion of liveness. And that's really all there is to say about it. It was a huge risk, uh, but it really paid off. And the results of this were that we got a number one app very, very quickly. As soon as it was promoted, and really, they did promote it, and that's half the secret to its success. It went straight to number one in the App Store, which is a tremendous success. Um, it got very well reviewed, and we got a whole bunch of feedback from hardcore fans and also people who would never think of doing something like this. People loved it on social media. Um, and the, uh, the stats were that we got 165,000 users in 24 hours, and that, that's gone much higher now since it's, uh, it's been active. But that's one of, the, one of the quickest sort of rates of downloading apps that we've ever seen in TV. 
Um, so a huge success, and in no small part down to the um, incredible, really incredible facility of uh, Seavolution Sync Now product. So if you've got any questions, oh yeah, I forgot to mention it was monetized by betting. Sorry. <laughs> So it makes a load of money for Paddy Power at the moment as well. Thanks very much. Great. Thank you, um, Tom.